And welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart an HP Pavilion 15-DA0053WM. Uh, this is a HP 15 series laptop with the 8th generation Core i5. So the first thing we're going to do is flip it over. And we're going to need to remove all of the screws in the bottom case. And you can see the ones that are exposed, but we're also going to be removing both of these rubber feet and getting the screws that are hidden underneath. So you'll need some kind of little tool to kind of pry up on one end of these rubber feet. And once you have one end started, that did not go well. Okay, so usually these will just come straight off, but in this case, it kind of broke off on one end. So we'll just repeat with the other side and see if we can get this off in one piece. So you may need to Kind of glue these back on with some other type of adhesive because it's really spotty and it'll sometimes take the adhesive up with the foot and sometimes it'll just leave it there. So as long as you have some other kind of glue or something then you should be able to get those rubber feet back on. And now we will go ahead and remove all of these screws. And for this it's going to be a small Phillips bit. This is a 2.5. Okay, once we have all those bottom case screws out, we're going to take a small flat bladed object such as a spudgy and we're going to separate the bottom case from the palm rest. So I'm looking at the easiest way to do it on this one. Um, it looks like Wherever you can find a gap in between the palm rest and the bottom case, just get, get the flat blade in there and just start popping it all the way around. Depending on how your unit was made, you might find a bigger gap on the side or the front. And then we'll just kind of work that bottom case all the way around until we unsnap it. It's also a good time to remove the optical drive. Um, I believe this is the screw for it right here. So if you remove this screw, um, you should be able to pull that optical drive out without having to remove any of the other case screws, just in case you want to just update or replace the optical drive. And we can go ahead and continue popping that bottom case off. Now on this part right here, um, you might be a little bit more careful. This thin piece of plastic here under the optical drive um, is the one of the more common pieces that break on the bottom cases. So we'll just make sure that we don't put too much pressure on that. Once you've popped all those snaps up, then we can go ahead and remove that bottom case and access the inside of the laptop. All right, so um, best method is to always disconnect the battery first. You wanna kinda de-energize the circuits inside the laptop before you start taking anything out. So we'll go ahead and remove the battery screws. And then we should be able to just lift the battery out. So we'll just pop it up out of the connector and then we can remove the battery. 
All right, ram stick is right here. We'll just go ahead and spread those little retainer bars and that will allow us to remove the ram stick. And the SSD drive here looks like it's just one screw. And then we can pull it from the connector on the motherboard. All right, so hard drive uh, upgrade or replacement. We're gonna go ahead and just remove these couple of screws here on the hard drive bracket. Then we're gonna lift that bracket straight up and off. Kind of poke through a little piece of plastic right here so you might need to kind of work it up and off all right so the SATA connector we're going to need to push the hard drive laterally out so we'll go ahead and just pull it out a little bit and then that will allow us to remove the hard drive from the SATA board all right now we can go ahead and do the little USB board here. Looks like there's nothing else holding it on. And to remove that ribbon, you just kind of flip up on the connector. It looks like we'll have to remove that SATA board as well. So same for the uh, SATA connector, the hard drive connector. Um, just one screw. So we'll go ahead and remove that in out board. And it appears the, it's kind of a weird angle. The Wi-Fi card is kind of sticking diagonally out of the motherboard. You don't see that too often. Um, so as soon as I pulled off that little plastic cover, it also popped the antenna off. If the antenna does not come off, you can just flick it up with your fingernail. And then we'll go ahead and remove that screw. And then we can pull it out of the connector. All right, so looks like we have a little bit of wiring here to kind of unthread from the fan. And then we'll go ahead and remove the fan here. So we'll go ahead and get that wiring out of the way. Um, I'm gonna wait and pull that connector out once I've made a little bit of more room. So we'll go ahead and remove that fan screw and then move the fan down a little bit and then we can get our fingernails on that fan connector and just wiggle it out. All right, so for the uh, heat sink, it looks like it's just the four screws here. So we're gonna go ahead and take those out. If you're gonna be reinstalling the heat sink with some new thermal paste, just make sure that you tighten these screws in a Z pattern. Um, these usually have, yeah, this one does as well. They have numbers stamped into the heat sink with the proper order of tightening but as far as removal, it doesn't matter. All right, once we have those screws out, we'll just kind of wiggle it free and pop it up off of the processor. Uh, if it's an older laptop, you know, sometimes the thermal paste can get really hard and it'll feel like it's stuck on there, but as long as you wiggle and don't pry up too hard, uh, you should be able to get that heat sink off no problem. All right, go ahead and finish removing that SATA board. Just flip up on that little connector and we can remove that SATA board. All right, so it looks like this particular model, um, the motherboard is partially held down by the hinge. So we're gonna go ahead and separate the display assembly from the palm rest uh, before we remove the motherboard. All right. 
right, so we'll have to go ahead and free any of the cables that are coming from the display assembly, which includes the Wi-Fi antennas and the webcam cable and the video cable. All right, so for the video cable, it looks like it's just a simple type connector uh, that you just push out laterally. So we'll get a fingernail on those little tabs there, and that will allow you to pull the video cable out of the motherboard. All right, so it looks like it's just one uh, Wi-Fi antenna and the one video cable that's coming from the display. And with most laptops, the display has to be in the open position to remove it from the palm rest. So in this case, I'm going to remove, uh, I'm going to remove all but one screw on each side. And then for the last two screws, we'll go ahead and support this from underneath so that we don't break anything. So we'll get these last two. And then we can separate the display assembly from the palm rest assembly. And we'll go ahead and put that aside for now. Alright, so we've got a nicely exposed motherboard and we can go ahead and start removing the other ribbons and cables. So the speakers just kind of slide out and then for the keyboard, it's a long flip up type connector. And this one is notched so it doesn't slide out laterally, you have to lift up and then out. And we'll go ahead and push that retainer back down. Same for the touchpad. And then we have one last one for the DC jack. Go ahead and wiggle that out and just kind of get it out of the way. All right, so it looks like we are ready to remove the motherboard and we'll go ahead and remove those final two screws. Once you have those screws out, we'll go ahead and lift up on one end, give it a little wiggle to make sure that we've, we don't have anything else holding it on. And then we'll slowly turn it over and make sure there's nothing else connected to the bottom, which there's not. And that's how you remove the motherboard. All right, so we're left with a couple speakers, the DC jack, and it's just held in by some plastic clips, so I'll go ahead and just kind of pop it up and off. So for the rest of the assembly, um, you do have the mouse button board that can be replaced. If you need to replace the touchpad, it's held on by uh, pretty strong adhesive in the front, so you would definitely need a heat gun to remove that piece. And it looks like the keyboard is riveted into the palm rest assembly, so the keyboard is not replaceable. If you have problems with your keyboard, um, you're just going to have to buy another uh, palm rest assembly. So that is it for the palm rest, and we will move on to the display. All right, so for the HP 15 series, um, it's like many other laptops that are not touch screens. It's a simple case of removing the front bezel. And once you remove the front bezel, you'll be able to see the inside of the display assembly, and it's usually pretty simple. 
So we'll go ahead and start popping the bezel off of the screen. Sometimes you can get a fingernail um, on the inner edge and just start popping it up, but this one, I don't really feel a gap in there. So we'll just go ahead and hit it from the side here. And we're gonna get the tool in between where the back cover and the bezel meet. Once you have it popped up a little bit and you've got it started, then you can easily work it around and just start popping it off all the way around. So it looks like on this model they have uh, included a, quite a bit of adhesive at the very bottom. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just pop, we'll finish popping up under here the little clutch cover. And once we have that kind of popped up off of the snaps, then it'll be a little bit easier to pull that adhesive off. There we go. All right. And it's definitely a good idea to try to get your finger in there and just try to spread that adhesive um, you don't want to pull really hard on the bezel because a lot of times that adhesive is uh, basically gluing part of the screen film and if you just pull straight up on it, it's going to rip it off of the screen. Okay, so it takes a little bit of work, but once you've kind of got your finger in there, you can just go along the edge and pull it up with the adhesive. You see how that was pretty strong adhesive, you know, it left some on the bezel and then it left some on the screen. But this part right here, uh, the little plastic or paper trim that goes along the screen, um, if you don't get your finger in there to kind of help keep that flat, it's just going to rip it off basically. All right, so we got a good in, uh, view of the inside of the display assembly. Uh, if you need to replace the screen, you've got one, two, three, four screws, and you can flip the display up and unplug that video cable. It's just held on by uh, a strip of adhesive. And then, of course, this, the hinges. It looks like there's four screws on each side to remove the hinges. And then the webcam and cable are just kind of threaded through the little channels here in the back cover. So once you get that bezel off, it's really easy to replace any of the components inside the display assembly. And you, if you're careful, you can actually do this while it's on the laptop, unless you're talking about, um, you know, doing something too serious with the hinges, um, because of course you need to take apart the bottom case to get the bottom part of the hinges out. But if it's for the screen or the webcam or one of the cables, then you should be able to um, replace it really easily. And also the Wi-Fi antenna um, is just held on by adhesive. So you just unstick it and then kind of feed it out of the little channels here. So that's basically it. It's not a very hard laptop to take apart or upgrade. So if you need to fix anything in it, no need to go to the Geek Squad or manufacturer. Most of the stuff is pretty easy to do. And as you saw, I could do it with just one small screwdriver, Phillips bit screwdriver. So that is it. That is how you disassemble an HP 15 series laptop. This one is a 15-DA0053WM. And if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.